In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at the NIST integration added to pull multi-vendor vulnerabilities from the NIST database. The first step in terms of integrating with NIST is to go into your settings of your organization. In your org, you're going to go into the integrations tab. This is where you may be familiar with already having the Cisco API integration set up and configured. This one is not. Uh, so you can pull Cisco end of life, end of sale, and things like P-certs for Cisco vulnerabilities. The new feature here in Glueware 4.2 is enabling the NIST NVD API. So you tick this box to enable it. We uh, warn you that we are pulling information from a third party into the application. You, you can optionally put in an API key. We do recommend this step that you go to the NIST.org website, you request an API key, this will dramatically improve your performance. You'll go from 10 requests per minute to 100. So if you have a larger network inventory and you want to process these, uh, you're going to want to request and insert that key. With or without the key, you can test your connectivity with the test button. Highly suggest you do that. Just click test and you're going to wait a few minutes uh, or however long it takes, a few seconds to a few minutes, depending on if you have a large uh, a base that's so pa passing test data and it's going to give you a message, you should receive this. If you don't receive this, you're probably going to want to talk to your IT team about um, your Glueware's installed instance and its ability to make outbound API calls. Now, with that being enabled, we're pretty much ready to go. Two other quick things. One is, I do recommend you turning on this as a scheduled activity where it can pull this API information daily. That way you don't have to kind of remember to go and trigger it and look at stale data. So I do recommend you tick this box and turn it on. Another very important step in the screen is to click the save button. If you don't click that save button, it's not going to save. So with those things set up, I'm gonna navigate into another org which has a, a lot of devices and more, more devices for me to kind of play around with from a, an integration standpoint. And let me navigate into device manager. So in device manager is where the main integration you're going to see with NIST and the ability to you know, dive into some of the details. But because the data is exposed in the device explorer, this grid, Device Explorer is common to most our applications like Drift and Audit and OS Manager, so you can see that data there as well. So with your devices here, you have two ways to actually trigger that API call. One is, as I mentioned, you should have it scheduled where it's going automatically. The second is you can, you can select a group of devices, like I can shift and select or click on select or control A and select all, and I can click on the update support data. And so it's gonna say, ah, for these devices, I'm gonna I'm gonna take these devices, create the format required, and then pass it off to Cisco and or NIST to pull the required data. I hit confirm, and it's, it's executing that um, collection, leveraging the third-party API. And so one thing to say about that is, if you do have devices of uh, common, if you have like a bunch of the same devices, Glueware is not going to execute individual requests for the devices of the same type. Glueware has a post process that's going to consolidate that list to minimize the API calls required or the data set required to make that call. So once you've had that integration and you, you've made that API call, the data is now available. As I scroll over to the right, these columns were already available from our integration with Cisco where you're going to see critical, high, and mediums. The way, if you don't see that data in your grid, you go into the cog here and scroll down and you will see critical, high, and mediums. Critical, high, and mediums. You want to make sure those are turned on so you see them in your view. Now let's take a look at some examples of this NIST data. So let me, again, it's probably a little helpful to see the columns that are here. So let me navigate into this device here. So this is an Arista device that I, I'm seeing some counts. And so when you have non-zero numbers, like if you have zero advisories, you're not gonna see this view. If you have non-zeros, you're gonna see this new view show up called advisory summary. You click on that view, and then you're going to see the data pulled in from NIST around your high critical, high, and medium vulnerabilities. 
And then you can either use this float over and, and navigate the view in that respect, or you can double click in, same way you, if you've used our Cisco PCERT integration, you double click in, you see the advisory information and any details about it. So back to uh, just the point of this is that, you know, Glueware now uh, supporting over 30 operating systems and multi-vendor, in addition to having Cisco PCERTs, you have ven vendor vulnerability for vendors such as Aruba and Fortinet and Juniper and Arista and Palo Alto and others. So let's just go down the list here. Let's take a, take a look at this Aruba device. Again, the Aruba device ha has vulnerabilities as well. I click in and I see these vulnerabilities across critical, high, and medium. So when you're working with Glueware and you do find that these are disclosed, then you want to perform your assessment. You want to look at the data. Hopefully there's enough data that's visible here. You can always click into this and navigate directly to NIST. But you could understand if the way you're using this device in your network is exposed to this vulnerability or not. So there's a bit of an assessment that happens. Then you may want to search your configurations or audit your configurations to see if you're exposed. And then if you are exposed and there needs to be a workaround or some implementation, you may move on to use our app to uh, automate the operating system upgrade or move on to config modeling where you are automating and pushing a config change as a workaround. So I can close these views out, but again, continuing this kind of multi-vendor assessment as I scroll down here, let's take a look at, you know, here's Cisco, which we've seen in, in the past. Take a look down in terms of, okay, so here's Juniper. So I can click into the Juniper, just showing that, we're pulling in this multi-vendor data now that you can assess the vulnerabilities disclosed through NIST. And uh, as again, NIST calls these CVEs, and then you have the CVE data that you can cross-reference with the NIST site or refer to for your internal tracking or purposes. And I just wanna highlight that this is available to you now. And the same integration is available to you as you navigate into dashboard or you navigate into data explorer. This data is available to you to visualize and also generate reports. So this concludes a, a quick demonstration of the new NIST integration for multi-vendor vulnerability tracking.